Good morning, church. We're so glad that you've clicked into worship with us uh, this morning. We are a streamlined team here, but we love Jesus. We love Jesus, and so we trust that the Spirit is with us right here and that the Spirit is with you wherever you are this morning. Happy Father's Day to you, uh, to all fathers, to stepfathers and grandfathers and fathers-in-law and father figures, those that have offered the gift of fathering. Uh, we, we thank God for, uh, for cultivating that gift in you, and we thank you for, uh, for using that, for being a good steward of that gift. We have the opportunity this morning to worship together. And we worship a God who is, among other things, Father to us. And in that, we acknowledge that we are children of a God who cares, a God who nurtures us and journeys with us every step of the way through this life. And that is a beautiful and amazing thing. So as we celebrate that, let us celebrate God our Father. Let's worship together. And friends, I'm going to show you now, Heath is going to show you now, a, uh, a special video. Pastor Deshay is not with us here today. He is visiting family in Missouri, and we're glad that he has that time. And uh, he has a message for you, and, uh, and that message will lead us into music that he has recorded. And so uh, let's worship together. Good morning, members of First Christian Church and new viewers who are tuning in, and happy Father's Day to all of the father-like figures in our church. My name is Deshay Jackson, and I serve as the music minister here. I am currently on vacation here in Northeast Missouri, and I am recording from Canton Christian Church, where I served as the choir director and pianist here during my college years from 2012 to 2016. If I could, I'd pan over to show you the church, Maybe we'll do that. Uh, just a quick view. Missing you all dearly. Uh, have a lovely day. If you have a printed order of worship, please join us in the call to worship. If not, that's okay. Just hold these words with, um, with us and uh, join us in spirit. 
All praise to God, who created us and who recreates us daily, whom we do not yet see, yet whom, whom we, we love. love. Whom we have met, who have not met yet face to face, yet whom we trust. trust. Let us come with thanksgiving and praise. And celebrate what what God God has has done for us. Amen. Our opening hymn is Faith of Our Fathers, appropriately for Father's Day, number 635. God, we gather with you this morning, both virtually and here together in this space. We ask that your spirit anoint us, that it inspire us, and that it work through us to bring healing and hope to the world. Open our hearts and minds, O God, in this time to whatever gifts you have for us to be made new, to find the joy of your salvation in this day. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen 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 indeed i'd like to read this morning from the book of ezekiel a familiar and beautiful passage from the 37th chapter, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. 
I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have a couple of new prayer concerns to share with you today. Carl East, who is father to Teresa Henderson, died this week. Um, Carl has been in hospice for some time, so this was expected and still difficult for this family that has already Uh, been in grief. Last week, uh, Roger's mother, you may remember, died also. So prayers for uh, the Hubers and the Hendersons. We love you so much, and we are holding you in this time. You may notice that Austin is not here today. Um, He is staying home with Jordan, who um, isn't feeling great. And in this time of anxiety around illness, that is extra difficult. So Prayers uh, for the Staggs family. We love you all as well. Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, we come today with so much on our hearts. Gratitude, anxiety, love, fear, hope, and deep concern. We live in a complex time of transition and struggle, of transformation and suffering. We trust that you are with us through it all. We confess, O God, that sometimes we have taken these things for granted. Health and freedom, gathering and connecting, singing and socializing, safety and familiarity. Our way of life is a gift that we never imagined being compromised. Forgive us for the ways we've expected all of this to remain unchanged and available. In this time of waiting and restraint, help us to find new ways to love and care for each other and our community. Hear the songs of our hearts that cannot pass our lips, but that long to be sung. Songs of lament and grief, of yearning and anticipation, We give thanks for the fathers, the father figures, the fatherless, and the father-like, all of those in our lives who have loved and supported us. Reality teaches us that some fathers excel, excel while others fail. We ask for your blessings on them all and forgiveness and healing where it's needed. We remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers die young or they are absent grandfathers, uncles, brothers, cousins, teachers, and friends, and the women of our families who are single moms. We lift up all who suffer in our midst, God, the sick, lonely, depressed, addicted, imprisoned, hospitalized, the victims, the poor, and the grieving. May they be comforted and healed, and may we continue to find ways to love and serve. Reconcile us to you and to one another. Unite us as your people that we may all be one. We ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you join us in singing Spirit of the Living God, number 259 in the hymnals. It sounded clear, sounded for the world to hear. Come make joyful music to the Lord. Halle, halle, halle. Thank you, music team. Well, friends, we're continuing today with our series on resurrection, and our focus today uh, will be on spiritual resurrection. What exactly is that? We'll, we'll study that together, and uh, I'd like to read this morning from 1 Peter, but before I do that, let me tell you a story of an amazing thing that, that happened to me this week. I went out, as promised, to do three interviews. I went out and, and interviewed Dusty Scoville, who is the executive director at Mission Granbury, and Mia Ruiz, who is the director at Ruth's Place OTS, one of our partners out there, and Margaret Kohenauer, executive director at the Paluxy River Children's Advocacy Center. And I don't know, maybe it's because we're in this series right now, and, uh, and I've been noticing these things, studying this text this week, but I noticed that all three 
told me beautiful stories of resurrection. They had to leave names and specifics out because of confidentiality concerns, but uh, Dusty told me the story of a man, uh, a veteran who lives here in Hood County, who was living on his own right here in Granbury in a mobile home. He'd lost his job. Utilities had been turned off, so he had no water and no power. His car had broken down, so he had no transportation. Uh, he had no cell phone. He was out of food. He was embarrassed to ask anyone for help. And fortunately, a neighbor noticed. A neighbor was paying attention and noticed his hurt and his need and called Mission Granberry. And little by little, they were, they were able to work together as community to help this man rebuild his life. Resurrection. Talking with Mia, Mia told the story of a child who was speech delayed and so didn't begin learning how to read and write until he was much older than average. And Mia recognized an opportunity because his mother had never learned to read or write either. And so Mia arranged for the two of them to learn together and to, to build this, this gift of reading and writing. Resurrection. And Margaret showed me the rock garden there at the Children's Advocacy Center where children that have journeyed through the crucifixion of abuse and have emerged on the other side strong and hopeful have painted and placed their rock as a reminder of that strength and that hope. Resurrection. Resurrection, friends, is real. It is real, and it is happening right here in this community right now. And that is what I'd like to talk about today. So with that in mind, let's take a look together at uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, and we'll read verses 3 through 9. And I have to pause before I do that and tell you that this is a meaty text. There's a lot going on here, and that's just kind of who Peter is. Uh, he reminds me of, of Faulkner with these complex sentence structures that sort of embody the complex interrelatedness of the concepts that he covers. I think the second sentence, as a matter of fact, actually contains nine, nine distinct themes, nine distinct concepts, uh, any one of which could be a sermon unto itself. So bear with me here, and, and let's read through this carefully and slowly. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here we go. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you've had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor, when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. And together we say, thanks be to God. Okay, let's see if we can get down to the root of what's happening here. There's a lot happening here. Let's dig in together. Second part of verse 3 again. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the Greek word there for new birth is anageneo. Uh, it gets translated also as born again. And that's a, a theme that may be common in the New Testament but you might find it surprising that the only time that that word, the literal version of born again, anageneo, appears in the text is right here, 1 Peter chapter 1. And the verse goes on to explain what that means. Doesn't mean that we're perfect now. The key 
is in the words living hope. We're given a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is risen, because he stands triumphant over death, we know that suffering and death can never have the final word. That's the good news. And it's so earth-shakingly good that life with it is fundamentally, qualitatively different than life without it, to the point that you can't really say it's the same life. We have this life that's defined by its brokenness and its ugliness and its finiteness, and then suddenly, suddenly those four words come reverberating out of the tomb to the four corners of the earth, down through history like living water, so that you might hear them and know them to be true. He is not here. He has emerged from the tomb, offering a living hope. And to be born again is precisely to live in that hope, released from the finiteness and the finality and the futility of a life without hope, which is death. Into, verse 4, an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. That, friends, that is spiritual resurrection. And it doesn't mean that we feel good about all things all the time, but it means that we're learning day by day to see all things through the lens of hope, this living hope. Now, there's another word that we're familiar with that's roughly synonymous with born again. Uh, it gets used a lot in Christian circles, and it's a beautiful, holy word that unfortunately, like some words, has taken on some baggage, maybe because many of us Christians have used it just a little bit pridefully. Look at me. I, unlike you, is the implication, am saved. Saved. Yes, yes, we are saved we are, because again, to be born out of despair into living hope is salvation. But if we're proud of ourselves for that, then the irony is thicker than an N95 mask. Too soon? Too, no? Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. Because one of the main things that we're supposed to be born out of is pride, right? We're born out of pride into connectedness and living hope. And it's that pride that just might be the chief source of our despair. Friends, salvation was never supposed to be this pretty, shiny rock that we keep in the display case under nice LED downlights for us and others to admire and take down occasionally to polish. That's not what salvation is. That's not what it's about. The rest of this passage paints a powerful picture of how we should think about this salvation that is the product of resurrection. And like the bodily resurrection that we talked about two weeks ago, there are sort of two aspects of this that we have to hold together in healthy tension. First, verses four and five say that this inheritance is, quote, being kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So yes, Salvation is something that you will know in its fullness, in the fullness of time. Yes, it is secure, kept in the spiritual realm where the brokenness of the physical world can't touch it. Yes. And look down at verse 9. You rejoice because you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What is that? That's a present progressive Word, you are receiving the salvation of your souls right now. Life is the process through which God works out your salvation. In other words, spiritual resurrection isn't just something that happens when you die. The journey of faith is the process of spiritual resurrection. God is trying to resurrect you right now. And by the way, on this Father's Day, 
That's what God as Father is all about. The fact that we have a God who is not just raining down power, but engaging in intimate relationship with us. The best answer I've heard to the question, are you saved, is yes, I am being saved. I am being saved by a God who goes with us and opens us moment by moment and day by day into living hope. It's also the answer to the question, why not just do whatever we want to in this life, right? I've, I've been asked this many times. If, uh, if when we come to Christ and, and repent, we are going to be welcomed into the fullness uh, of, uh, of God's kingdom, why not just do whatever we want in this life and pray repentance on our deathbeds? And the answer is that salvation isn't just about the afterlife, right? It's about knowing and sharing in the fullness of God's shalom in this life. And because that's so, because that is so, perhaps the reminder that we need to hear today is that we have a critical role to play in that process. And we may not like it. See, we like to change others, don't we? In our image. If they, if they would just do things the way that we do things, all would be well with the world. We like to uh, scatter our seeds of, of critical wisdom on Facebook and Instagram. And sidebar, if you want to dwell, if you want to dwell in the abyss that is social media, be my guest. But, uh, Spoiler alert, you're not going to work out your salvation on there, and you're probably not going to work out anybody else's salvation on there either. If we want to co-labor, to co-labor with God in the process of resurrecting us into living hope, we have to be willing to be changed. Wednesday morning at the men's prayer group, I heard... Uh, one of the best, most authentic, most meaningful personal testimonies that I've ever heard. Uh, our speaker told us the story of how a, a traumatic event in his life had caused him to take a step back and, and really take a hard look at himself and his life. And then he said something that I thought hit the nail on the head. He said, we have to be willing to hold up the mirror to ourselves not just to reflect it on others, but to, to hold up the mirror to ourselves. And if you hear that, and your first thought is, yes, yes, Justin, that's right, you tell them, those people need to be willing to take a good hard look in the mirror. Mm, you might be missing the point if that's your first thought. We need to take a hard look at ourselves. A couple years ago, I asked one of my mentors in the ministry, if you could go back, uh, he was retiring, and I said, if you could go back and do it all over again, what, if anything, would you do differently? And he said, you know, he said, I would probably spend less time trying to be right and more time trying to be love. We need to ask ourselves in critical moments questions like, how might God be trying to use this moment to save me? and to save others. Why am I doing this? How will this statement or this action introduce Christ-like love into the world? What does God need me to leave behind? How does God need me to be present? How will I feel about me in this moment when I look back upon my life? We need to hold that mirror up to ourselves. And the mirror, friends, the mirror is Jesus Christ. If you will look to his life, to his teachings as the model, and open yourself fully to being changed in his image, you will find, I promise, you will find that you are receiving right now the salvation of your soul. It's a process. It's a journey. Verse 6 in today's text tells us that it may be a painful journey sometimes. But we take up our cross and we follow Jesus up that long road of suffering to Golgotha and to the tomb beyond. And then, 
an amazing thing happens. We find that the tomb isn't the end of the road. Standing in our tombs of pain and disappointment and anxiety and grief, we look out and we are amazed to see that the road continues through the tomb to something beyond. And it is then that we really know what it means to be saved. Amen. Amen. Our communion hymn today is number 618, How Firm a Foundation. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in God's excellent word. What more can be said than to you God has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld by my right, just omnipotent hand. When through the deep waters I call thee to go, the rivers of woe shall not thee overflow. For I will be near thee, thou dyer to bless, and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. A soul that on Jesus still leans for repose, I will not, I will not desert to its foes. That soul through all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, never forsake. Friends, I have said this every year, uh, I think, on Father's Day, and I'll continue to do so because I think it's important. There has been much discussion in recent years about use of the word father in worship. It certainly is one of those terms that, uh, that appears in Scripture. Uh, it's, it's part of what Jesus says uh, when, he, when he tells us how to pray. But there are lots of other words in Scripture for God. And if we only use the word Father, we are perhaps cutting ourselves off from a fuller and, and more beautiful understanding of the many ways that God interacts with God's people. Having said that, the word Father, the metaphor Father, is a perfectly beautiful and valid one in Scripture. And the word in the New Testament that most often gets translated as Father is the word Abba. This is a very special word because it doesn't just mean father. It's a term of endearment. It means daddy. And the use of this word in New Testament times was absolutely revolutionary because for the first time in human history, the message was we are children of a God who doesn't just rain down power from on high, not just a distant God, but a God who cares. A God with whom we can be in intimate relationship. A God who places God's hand on our shoulder and guides us and journeys with us through this life. Perhaps the most powerful embodiment of that in Scripture is this table where Jesus sat down with his friends, his disciples, in intimate relationship, shared a meal, shared blessing and love and hope. Then it was that Jesus took a loaf of bread and blessed it 
and broke it and gave it to them and to you, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and poured it out for them and for you, saying, This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all people, that we might be bound together in living hope. As often as we eat this bread, as often as we drink of this cup, we do so remembering his life, his death, his resurrection, and we entrust our lives into his hands until we meet again in the fullness of time. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for being that kind of God, a God who knows us deeply, a God who loves us more deeply than we can imagine, a God who holds our lives in the palm of your hand. Mold us, Father God. Make us more like your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. And let us partake together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. A little five-year-old boy named Lucas wanted to do something for his dad for Father's Day. It was a few weeks away, but he had no money. So he came up with a little plan. One night when his parents were asleep, he crawled into their room and grabbed the wedding ring off of his father's nightstand. He knew every night that his dad would take it off and place it there next to the bed. So he grabbed it and he took it back to his room and he wrapped it up. Now, he watched his father search the house up side and down to find this ring and didn't say anything. He listened to his dad file a police report and an insurance claim, didn't say a word. And then on Father's Day, he proudly walked in and handed his dad this gift. And when his dad opened it, he was shocked, first of all, that his five-year-old could keep this secret for so long. And then for just a moment, he wanted to be angry with him, but he knew he couldn't because he realized that Lucas knew something that we so often forget. Nothing that we have, nothing, really belongs to us. And so we release it to God, and in ways we could never imagine, blessings come back to us. So... We share these ties and offerings today either by way of a check in the mail, which is secure and we check often, or by clicking give on our website at fccgranberry.org. And we are so grateful, first of all, for God's abiding love and sustenance and for your continued love and support. Pastor Amy, I, I've uh, been missing my wedding ring for about two weeks. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to trust, it is Father's Day today, I'm going to trust that maybe my three-year-old took that ring and has or been no. patiently waiting to give it back to me today. That's, <laughs> that's my hope. I'm going to work in that for the next hour or two until I get home. Okay, friends, uh, before we close our worship together today, just a couple things to let you know about. Uh, first of all, the flowers here between Josh and Amy. These flowers were given by Candy Stroop, and she said that they were in honor of a very good dad in Rogers Coleman, 
and, uh, and all good dads and dad figures everywhere. And Candy, we thank you for that gift. Uh, we are especially grateful for Rogers Coleman. Uh, Doc, I know, has been a wonderful father and, and grandfather. He's also been a wonderful father figure to so many of us, including me. And so, Doc, we, we love and appreciate you and all you do for us. Uh, if you missed Sunday school this morning, digital Sunday school, uh, Russell's class, the disciples class, is available at fccgranberry.live, as is the youth Sunday school class with Pastor Austin, so check those out. Uh, also, go to fccgranberry.live if you haven't already and watch the interview that I did this past week with Dusty Scovel. That's posted there. Great way to learn more about Mission Granberry. I learned some things that I didn't know about that uh, amazing place. It is a beautiful place, and uh, Dusty gives us in that interview uh, lots of good information about what they do and how we can be involved with them there. So do check that out, and look this, this Wednesday for uh, the interview with Margaret Kohenauer from the Paluxy River Children's Advocacy Center. Uh, that was a special blessing for me. She even gave me a tour, and I got to walk the camera around, so you can kind of check out uh, the Children's Advocacy Center from the inside this Wednesday. All right. Let me say just a couple of words about next week. We are excited because uh, the board has made the decision to move forward with having in-person worship here in our sanctuary next week. Uh, the board is going to meet again on Monday, has been working hard to kind of prepare the plan and continuing to follow the data and what's going on and, and is trying to sort of uh, make the best, most faithful decisions that we can about how we do things here next week. And so we will be communicating with you over the next several days about, you know, how to prepare for that time, what exactly to expect when you arrive, how worship will go. In advance of that, just two things I want to say. First of all, if you have any concerns about being here, if uh, you have underlying health issues, it is okay to stay home. The Spirit will continue to bind us with you wherever you are. And so I would, I would almost encourage you, if you have any doubts at all, stay home. That is okay. And worship will continue to be meaningful in that way. If you do come next Sunday, the one thing that I need to forewarn you of is this. I think we all have these images in our mind of exactly how things are going to be. And those images are born out of memory of how things were here before. And I just want to prepare you for the fact that it's not going to be exactly the same. Okay? It's going to be good. It's going to be beautiful. The same sweet spirit will abound in this place. But some things are just going to be different. We're going to have to do communion a little bit differently. We're going to have to think differently about how we engage with each other in our common spaces, uh, how, we, how we use this space here. So please do come prepared uh, to, to share the space, to be respectful of others. And we do look forward to worshiping with you. All right, friends, we are going to close now with hymn number 518. This is a day of new beginnings. If you have your hymnal or your printed resources from our website, please sing with us.
praise and share of and do. This is our day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Okay, before I offer the benediction, just a couple uh, awarenesses, perhaps, on my part. First of all, Amy, your secret is out. Everybody knows how good of a singer you are now. Okay, so, so thank you for doing that. Josh, thank you for holding down the mail section today. Sure. Uh, if we could just have one person here to sing, uh, I, I'm glad it was you. And uh, we thank you for all that you do for us. Emily's behind the camera. You can't see her right now. She really doesn't want to come around and be on the other side, but she does good work behind the camera. Heath. Heath has a, a shirt on up there that says, Best Dad Ever. And Heath, I do not doubt that you are. Uh, and <laughs> Say again? A and he's at least a contender, yes. Uh, what I would say, though, in addition to that, with all due respect to every other sound person, every other technology minister everywhere, uh, we think you're the best technology minister ever, too. <laughs> Heath was working hard today. There was a lot going on with this, and, uh, and Heath, we, we really appreciate you. I noticed in the, the video there that there was what appeared to be a divine light shining upon Deshay as well. So if you're watching Deshay today, uh, we pray that that divine light is shining on you abundantly. Hope you have a good time with your mama and your family up there, and uh, we send our blessings. And now, friends, may the saving grace, the saving resurrecting grace of our Lord Jesus the Christ. May the love of Abba, Father. May the fellowship, the power of the, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, abide with you, lead you into living hope, now and always. Amen.